Welcome to Metric Stream GRC Summit 2021 and to this IT and Cyber Product Innovation Session. I am Anil Kumar, Product Manager focused on IT and Cyber here at Metric Stream. In this session, at first, we want to highlight the challenges organizations are facing today from the context of IT and Cyber. We routinely hear about organizations facing supply chain attacks, data breaches, and ever increasing IT and cyber risks. Target security breach, Stuxnet computer worm, Eastern European ATM malware comes to mind. European Union has forecasted that there will be four times more software supply chain attacks in 2021 than there were in 2020. Also, to take advantage of the cost and performance of IT operations, modernization, and also data security and protection, the organizations are rapidly migrating from on prem to cloud infrastructure. The C suite and board are demanding that risks be communicated in financial and business terms. For risk managers, there is lack of real time visibility into their IT and cyber risk and their threat exposure. There are inherent challenges for compliance to a range of frameworks and standards, example, PCI DSS, GDPR, CCPA. And finally, number of controls are exploding. There is significantly increasing the costs, efforts associated to maintain and manage them. Before we get into the actual innovations, we wanted to make the following recommendation. Organizations will benefit in the long run adopting an integrated approach. We strongly believe that the organization should take an integrated approach to and across all their programs. One should prioritize and focus on the programs that have the most impact and expand into other areas once there are marketable wins. Organizations should integrate with multiple security tools to consolidate the data. Finally, they should institute a platform where all the programs can function. This will create interconnectedness and consistency. Joy, you can now take it over to speak about innovations. So thank you, Anil. Uh, at Metricstream, we have been pioneering uh, many ways of doing risk assessment. And we, we also talked at length, what does quantification mean? And we are very proud to announce that we are launching the product for uh, cyber risk quantification. Now, before we get into the details, it's very important to understand what does cyber risk quantification mean? And why is it so popular or getting popular in IT and cyber security space? So risk quantification would in, in involve you know, quantification techniques for any given organization to express their risk in a financial terms or in monetary terms, simply put in dollars or in the local currency. Now, transforming uh, the associated risk or the technical aspects of, say, threats, vulnerability controls into any dollar terms, it has to be interpreted at some level by the business stakeholders. Now, the best part of it is once you can quantify that risk, then you can do many things to that because now you can really touch and feel and see the number. So one way we look at risk quantification is in a computing the loss exigence curve. And I'll come to that in details, how to do that into this world. So we have been, uh, you know, metrics team have been working a lot in terms of how do we qualitatively do uh, an analysis and do a risk assessment. Now, risk assessment, you know, the, at the end of the day, you know, this produces a heat map if you're doing the qualitative assessment. And the approach has been to look at the severity, which is basically the impact and the likelihood, map it into a two-dimensional metric, if you will, with high, medium, and low as with color coding, right? Now, the challenge with that is, yes, you can do that. You can make it as a questionnaire based as a risk assessment, and you can actually present that to the board. But then high, what does it mean? How high it is? What is the relative dollar value to it? That doesn't come out very well in the heat maps. So when you are trying to answer this question, so do you have enough insurance? What is our risk mitigation plan? Are we spending too much or too little on cyber risk? What are the top five exposures we have? Which, which are the top five assets we need to protect? It doesn't come out very clearly in this heat map. And hence, it is very difficult to compare and contrast between different assets. 
how do you do a risk analysis by assets, if you will. So taking that beyond, what are the factors that would basically uh, drive for risk quantification? So the idea is, well, okay, assuming that I can quantify the risk, what is the real benefit to doing that? So CISOs are really, you know, coming up with a plan to say, well, how do I express all this high, medium, low in terms of do dollar value? And then I can present you to the board and the executives to secure enough budget to do the work, right? Also, we are seeing the regulators are started to coming up with certain level of definitions. And it will be soon that regulators will be asking uh, you know, the companies to set aside certain capital based on some level of quantification being done. And we have seen this in the past with operational risk in the financial sector. Now, operational risk financial sector, you have to set aside certain capital. It's a requirement for the regulators. It's soon we see that this is also going to happen with cyber risk. And then the most important thing is once you know the dollar value with certain level of confidence, you can actually action on it, right? And that action can be, as we know, it can be either you accept the risk or you try to mitigate the risk by buying insurance or you want to buy, you know, you want to transfer uh, the risk to, you know, by imposing certain level of controls. There are various ways of you can, you know, uh, mitigate the risk. That also needs to be captured. So the beauty of this is once you know what is the dollar value of the risk, you can actually take actions on it. Now the question comes in that what kind of actions are going to take and how are we going to quantify this risk, right? So we talked about what actions we can take, but then let's zoom in into what action, or how do we quantify this risk? Now there has been an attempt to do this in a very discrete way, which would mean that you can define the factors and you can define the, or and, uh, input the factors. And then you can come up with your own formula and say, well, you know what, A plus B minus C will give me the cyber risk. Now, this discrete values by factors is actually, yeah, it works to a certain extent. But then when you're when you're trying to answer the question, well, how many times do you expect a hurricane to hit my organization so that I have a disruption in my business? Typically, you do not have one number. We are going to say, well, let's make it as a range. So we expect around six to ten hurricanes, you know, uh, in this hurricane season to hit me in my organization, and there's a disruption happening in the business. So now we start saying, well, let's not talk about discrete numbers. Let's give a range. Let's give a probability to the range, right? And again, this model has been there for quite some time. Uh, so the triangular model, the port based model, and log number models, there are different models that exist to actually take in that probability of those numbers, right, which is the mean, max, uh, the median, if you will, and then come out with the probability distribution of that, right, by factors. So again, the same technique can be used in quantifying cyber risk. So let's look at few of the distribution which exist today in the market, right? And one which is being heavily used is a PERT. A PERT has been there for well, 70 plus years. It is a very convenient way of uh, doing the estimation. Essentially, it takes four or five parameters mean most likely max or the median value. And then based on that, you can actually start creating your distribution graph, as you can see in the graph here, right? Now, once you do that, right? So how do you make use of that? So there are, as I said, there are different quantification methods today in the market. One of them are the hierarchical factor-based that has become very popular. In other words, it's also called FAIR. And uh, you know we'll see in subsequent in a part of this that how we have implemented fair. Fair has multiple variable levels, right? I.e., level one, two, and three. It takes in different multiple factors. It has a flexible relationship between the factors, and we also see that fair is a kind of an you know it's an it's an open standard which is there in the market. And we'll see there are certain challenges with the fair in the subsequent section. But one of the challenges comes to my mind is, well, FAIR expects you to uh, define those mean, max, most likely values. The question to the come is like, you know, where are, am I going to get those values? Where, where exactly an organization can come up with those values? Apart from 
this factor based models, we see the insurance models are there because you're buying cyber risk. So the actual models are based on the history, based on certain parameters, you can come up with an actuarial based models. We also seeing that there are some customers who have gone in and created their own IP based models, and which is very important to you know look for because those are very custom solutions. You see, or more customized models, but that has a very good play in the market too. And last but not least, because we do not have enough cyber risk data, the question is, can we use um, machine learning algorithm to do prediction? And that is also getting popular these days. So if you look at FAIR, uh, the, the way FAIR has been defined by the standard and at the top of the node, you are actually calculating the annual loss expectancy. expectancy. And that is contributed by multiplying loss event frequency by the loss magnitude. And then you go to the next level and see whether you can actually take in the threat event frequency and the vulnerability data points, and you can multiply the two to get your loss event frequency. So in other words, this is a bi binary tree, right? Which allows you to compute the loss, annual loss expectancy, and you are actually capturing values at the lower level of the trees and the and the values will actually contribute to uh, your loss which is called ALD. right now if you look at certain formulas which is being used or being defined in fair right um, you'll see that risk is equal to nothing but loss even frequency times magnitude the loss magnitude is actually a primary loss amount plus a secondary loss amount. So all this formulae I have been clearly defined. And then at the end of the day, you are producing the loss exceedance curve, which is nothing but this will show you the probability of loss exceeding any given any chosen threshold. So basically you can say there's a 52% probability of a loss of 3.5 million or greater than 3.5 million. Right. So that tells, tells you with certain level of confidence that what the loss can be. So what you have been able to do so far is you have been able to actually compute the aggregated ALE at the top level using the Monte Carlo simulation. Right. Uh, so this is a very helpful measure. And today, and we are very proud to say that we can do that in metric stream. But once you do that, once you calculate the ALE, now you're trying to do that at multiple levels of your business. So the next important thing is how do we aggregate that risk? And as you know that you know, it's your organization may be a simple organization with a simple structure or it may be very convoluted with multiple hierarchies. And sometimes you look through different lenses of uh, you know, the hierarchy. You want to see what is the legal entities and what is the legal vehicles or you really want to see it by geography. So there are different ways of looking at your organization. And the interesting part is the regulators or in your senior execs will probably want to say, well, by division, can you give me the ALE? Or by a business unit A, can you tell me how much risk I have, right? So in order to do that, we actually have inbuilt that into a platform to take this methods, right? The statistical methods, the simulation methods, and try to come up with various loss estimations at different levels of the hierarchy. And that gives you the power to do much deeper analysis. Well, not only to come up with uh, one number, but I can come up with a one number at different parts of the organization, different levels of the organization. So if you look at how Metric Stream does this today, uh, we are we have been practicing this for a long time, that we have very solid federated data model. And that is a key for our success. And so all interconnected with different kinds of risk. So cyber risk, if you break it down, it also boils down to managing your assets, managing your threats, managing your vulnerabilities, managing your issues, right? When you're doing a risk assessment, it can come up with a lot of issues which you have to manage. Managing your control database, right? So all of that comes into our the first plane, which is a data layer, which is a federated data model. And then we built a platform on top of it we produce the simple forms to capture data, or it can be as complex as defining APIs to do a data exchange on real time. And then you have the whole gamut of reporting and the workflow around it. On top of that, we have built out the, the machine learning models, and that's what we are calling the metric stream intelligence, which allows you to create these simulation techniques and gives you the 
full power of doing statistical analysis along with machine learning techniques. So that's where we will feel very proud that the way we are approaching this is not only just by managing the workflow of risk assessment, but actually allowing you to do the computation of the risk and come up with a solid number or set of numbers which you can aggregate, you can play with it, and you can take action on it. So metric stream intelligence is basically a combination of our AI ML engine and the calculation engine. It sits on top of our federated data model, and it allows us to not only integrate with our own uh, IP-based calculation services, but also it can inter interact with, if you have one model on your side, with that and give you the capability to do the risk aggregation. So if you go, if you go a little bit beyond, uh, we are not stopping at FAIR only because we understand that FAIR is a binary tree kind of structure. And we believe that there are more factors which will get involved into computation of this risk. That's why we basically have kept the flexibility to define many factors for a given node. And you can actually define the calculation method you're going to use to combine these factors and come up with an aggregated number. So that's the full flexibility we have in the metric stream, and that's exactly what has been built out as a simulation engine. And by the way, this simulation engine can not only be used for cyber risk quantification, we are going beyond to use this for operational risk calculation, for ESG risk calculation. So this is the, you know, the heart of the whole engine, which is our calculation services, which allows us to take this calculation service into many, many other areas. So if you look at the metric stream uh, implementation of cyber risk, as I said before, that we are not stopping with FAIR, we are going beyond FAIR. And we want to make sure that you know it, it can handle any level of complexity to an extent that the probability distribution factor also can be used as a variable or as an input to a calculation engine. And that gives you the real power. You may want to use log normal for certain set of nodes, or you want to use a per distribution for certain uh, set of nodes. So in order to give you a glimpse of how we are taking machine learning into uh, this whole you know, uh, whole engine, right? We have this AI powered action plan recommendation. So what we are doing is, well, we, you have, or you will soon get the burden of many, many such issues coming in into your ecosystem. So you need to somehow classify those into certain packets, buckets, and then you are going to take some actions on those kinds of issues. And we have gone to an extent where we will learn from your data. We have created a model out of it. And then basically, as you are typing in the issues, we can say, well, it belongs to this kind of classification or this kind of bucket. And by the way, in the past, you have done or taken those many actions to mitigate that or action those issues. And it's a very powerful engine if you look at it. It's based on uh, many such ML algorithm, not only one. And there are many steps in this. One is to classify your issues. Then you have to look for what are the uh, action which has been taken in the past against those issues and give up kind of priority. And also it's a reinforced learning. You're learning as you go. So as you see, well, if you mark that, well, I'm going to take this action, the machine will take that as an input. And next time it will be much more accurate in terms of predicting the action plan. So this is one of the many examples how we are using uh, machine learning techniques within metric stream. So where is the future? So the future lies here on more of, as you are saying, that we are doing much more innovations here. Now we do understand that threat intelligence, you know, is a big player in the cyber risk. So we are you now looking at how we bring in that data point into our ecosystem. We are also, as I showed before, the AI power recommendation engine, right? Which will allow you to come up with the values which you want to capture for each of the factors. So in some cases, if you don't know what the main max uh, most likelihood value would be for a certain factor, you know, metric stream system will actually prompt you, you being in telecom sector, being in the West Coast, you know, we have seen that yeah, the organization of your size, this is the values they have been using. So that's kind of a recommendation based, you know, engine will have to actually allow you to compute the aggregated risk. And then the lastly, you know, we are also looking at how we can rationalize the controls. 
as you know, at the end of the day, you are going to have certain controls in your organization. The question is, are there duplicate controls or not? How effective those controls are? These are things where we are saying, well, let's quantify it. Let's see how machine learning can help us in doing that. So thank you all for listening to this. I hope uh, you are very excited and we are more than happy to contact us and you know, uh, let us know how we can help you in this journey. Thank you.